is sort of like what is intergenerational trauma. I really hope like to be um, an old lady who knows like birds by their call. That's a big ambition of mine. Yeah. <laughs> to really be like one of these like crazy old witchy ladies with like long white hair. <laughs> It happens sooner than we think. <laughs> yeah, totally. So, hmm. Oh! I'll get the <laughs> I had a really funny, but this is, this is a total side note, but I had a funny experience in the fall. Like, I just moved to the States, and I was trying to take this ferry I'd never taken before to go to Governor's Island, if you know that island. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to see this like art thing and it was kind of a rainy day and I'm like, oh, did I get the right place? I'm rushing around and I'm so used to New York being covered with police everywhere all the time. So I was just like, oh, there's police, but like, whatever. And I crossed the road and all of a sudden all these police were like, miss, miss. And they like started surrounding me and they're like, you can't go there. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just trying to get the ferry. Like, how do I get to the ferry? And they were just like, we don't care about your ferry. The president's coming. And I was like, what president? <laughs> just like instinctively, I was just like, I don't know what you're talking about. What president? And they were like, man, the president of the United States of America is here. Step aside. <laughs> like, ah, Canadian in New York. Like trauma that is not the lived experience of the person having it, but that it is. I don't know. I guess it's semantics. Like it's lived in a way, but it's like, let's say, in the case of something like mass violence or genocide, it's not a survivor of that, it's someone who came in a generation afterwards who is experiencing in their own way the legacy of that violence. You know, I know that intellectually, but just doing it, having someone touch along, feeling along my sternum, and touch along, feeling here, like I just was overwhelmed with sadness. I didn't even know what it was about. I'm like, it's not, there's no intellectual idea of, oh, it's about this time this happened or this person. It was just overwhelming sadness. I think the body carries that, you know? And then when I did an authentic movement thing, um, what I performed was very much about, like, some of the chronic pain I have in my body that I think is super connected along my matrilineal line. You know, like, my mother was... In bed, abandoned in utero, and I have chronic wound pain. I think that's very connected, you know, even of my grandmother's experience of being pregnant in post war Yugoslavia, abandoned, alone. Like, she'd given birth to her first child in a field during bombing during the occupation of Yugoslavia because you couldn't go to the hospital, you know. So, just like thinking about her, like, real lived experience of this, like, terror but this maternal terror of like well I have to protect these children how am I going to do that and it, you know that being really situated in the womb and the body of like I have to create a safe space but how can I possibly do that nothing is safe about this environment and I'm alone and I'm scared and all of this stuff and I really feel like my pain is super related to that line of um of ancestry and I just did this this dance just kind of spontaneously came out that was very much um, depicting that and relating this kind of grief area to this womb area and uh, I decided to try and put it together as a performance for our performance night and you know I was nervous oh it's really personal or whatever people are going to do fun things and I'm doing this really kind of violent thing and oh what's that going to look like but um, I remember one of my teachers saying like you'll know when you're done the performance it doesn't really matter what it looked like aesthetically you'll know how you feel like did you feel like um, I perform my ritual or not and I was really thinking of her when it was over because I was like I, I really felt that way I really felt like I like expunged something from my body and I mean the two weeks since then I felt more physically well than I have in a few months so I think there's a real connection there I don't know it's even very strange that it's a guy <laughs> but it's like okay cool like, that's working then great <laughs>
Life is surprising. <laughs> you know, you didn't really expect that to come out. <laughs> you got the mic this time? I got the, I got the, yes. <laughs> yes, I have the mic this time. So now we got the beer and the ice cream flavor. Uh, I don't know if I'll be as good now. Maybe I'll be better. Maybe I'll be less nervous. <laughs> <laughs> the desire isn't to like remove that wound, it's just to acknowledge that it did happen, that it is part of our human experience, that humans are capable of, of horrific things, and, um, and that we somehow have to find a way to reconcile that, but not necessarily like rid ourselves of it, because um, I don't really think that we can. 